So someone asked me the other day, what is ego? And I know darn well that this person knows exactly what ego is. And I think their question really was, what is ego to me? And so I thought, well, you know, maybe while I, I, I'm going to use this opportunity to just share what I feel is ego, which is no different than what you know about ego, what everyone else says about ego. But I'll just share my experience with understanding at least my own ego. Um, and yes, I am a little tired today. I got very little sleep. So I'm a little, I'm a little croaky. <laughs> um, and I have nothing prepared. So be prepared for a ramble here. Yeah. I, I mean, I think we all innately know what the ego is. And we would all say, well, it's the not self in, in uh, I guess, human design terms. It's the not self. But if you, reflecting back when I had a teacher in the very beginning of my journey, you know, I would say some stuff, ask her stuff or whatever. And she'd just say, you're in the ego. And at that time I was like, but what is the ego? Even though I kind of knew what it meant. Of course, you can Google anything now and you, you can get a million answers. Um, I really, you know, she could have said, it's the, it's not you. It's, it's, and I didn't quite get it. So and if you don't, you only can see the not self, the you, the ego, when you're like on the other side from it, when you've had like oh, an awakening it in some way, you've had some, um, uh, you know, experience that shows you your true self, a glimpse, and you go, oh, shit, that's the ego or something like that. <laughs> So I, I understand where this question comes from. Like we know what it is, but we don't know what it is. And anyway, I, I don't um, purport to have any answers, but for me, um, ego is, I call it energy going out, E-G-O. And to me, it's a process that we start you know, from birth, you know, zero to 21, we start creating a self. So it's a process and it becomes a thing, it becomes a structure in a way. It becomes our astral body, right? And I can only explain this by describing um, two experiences I've, I had many years ago that really showed me parts of the ego and the whole ego structure from my perspective. Um, one day I was, um, I can't remember what I was working on writing. And I just, for the first time ever, I slipped into a no mind state. And suddenly, like I was gone or something. I don't know what happened. Anyway, it was wonderful, but suddenly like everything slowed down and, and I, and suddenly I saw this, I mean, saw it, um, it wasn't up here imagining, I don't know. It was really crazy. It was like, I really was seeing it. I was seeing this column of crystal clear light with little crystals, like, uh, for, um, Looking back, I know what those crystals are, so I'll say what they were. Like the little beings of consciousness, our helpers, our devas, the elementals that, that create us. So sparks of consciousness, these little um, crystal sparks. Anyways, this beautiful, clear, clearish, whitish, sort of not really white, but it was reflecting. So this white column of light, vertical, coming all the way down here. Um, filled with all these sparks of consciousness, crystallized sparks of consciousness. And then there was a space. And this column was like rotating very slowly. It had it had a, a rotating feel to it, like clockwise. I don't remember if that's the right way, but it was like this way and vertical. And then what else I saw? And I recognized that as being, oh, that's my true self. 
that's my true self coming down. And then when I saw there was a space and then around me was this other, um, still the same substance of consciousness and these sparks of light, but it was, there was space, it was separate from this column and it was like horizontally, but it was circular around me and it was spinning in the opposite direction. And I immediately recognized, oh my God, that's my ego. It's, and I could see that it was this false sense of self that I built based on all the thoughts from from the beginning when we're born and we start uh you know building thoughts about ourselves and, and emotions all these thoughts and emotions that i thought i was whether it's a stupid person a fat one or you know or even good things like oh okay um, whatever I, I can't even think about them right now sorry i'm so tired and it had built this you know every i am is built into there every every um it's just every thought about oh this is what i should do or this is what somebody said about me and all my hurts and pains it it was just built into this matrix i guess this false sense of self and still made out of consciousness but what i saw was like oh it's still made out of consciousness and i had i had a deep sense of empathy I, I really kind of felt like oh this is so sad this structure of consciousness is built out of misqualified energies that's a theosophical term but it's it's energies that there are thought forms and emotion forms that are built out of not knowing the true self and they're misqualified. And this cir cylindrical circular thing was moving in the opposite direction, like counterclockwise. And what it was doing was like, like, like screwing itself down and being attached into the physical world. And you could see that it had no connection because it was born in this dualistic reality and born out of a, a being that was never taught to go inwards and discover and live and work from true self and cosmic conscious values. And this poor little thing, this ego matrix structure was everything that was built out of fear survival it's all about me 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 how and what am i going to become in the world what am i i am this i am this i want i want i want i want people to notice me blah 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 because it had no connection to true self and the only thing it had to go by was this structure of memory from every event that ever happened. And so it was like on a hamster wheel. Well, um, I know how to react based on this reaction. This, I mean, it was just quite a little download for this little brain here <laughs> to see all this in one thing. And I hope I'm explaining this correctly. So yeah, I felt a lot of empathy because this, you know, instead of hating the ego, because I know we all like, oh, it's ego. We hate the ego. It made me feel empathy and sympathy for this uh, living structure, right? Because it was our, because if we are never taught to go inwards, that we, we have a true self, you know, whatever, then we are constantly looking to the outward world. It's an outward movement. Please, somebody affirm me, confirm me, tell me what I'm supposed to do. Let me, you know, let, let me get a, let me get a profile. Let me go to astrologers. Let me go to teachers. Although I'm not saying that all teachers are, are 
Um, depends on the teacher, I guess. But let me go out into the world. Let me keep searching. Let me ask questions. Let me go to classes. Let me have this experience to please confirm and tell me what I am or what I what I'm not, whether it's through good experiences or bad experiences. So it's that constant energy that goes outwards. And then we have all these thoughts and reactions and feelings about all of that and how we're supposed to be in this world. I mean, you get it. I mean, look, you know what an ego is, but it is a living structure based on the process of constantly seeking outside of ourselves for everything, everything. Yeah, so... Um, it is a false sense of you because the poor little deer was born with no connection to its source. And so, of course, we can't blame it, of course. And if you're and if and if you've never had a glimpse or a touch of true self, it's very hard to see this this ego structure that it's. Well, you, you know, you're like, you're so in it where your consciousness is so attached to it that you can't see the forest from the trees anyway. So I think we all know what ego is. It is just, um, yeah, all of those misqualified thoughts, the I am, it's the me, 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 it's the survival it's all the I wants, I need, confirm me, confirm me, teach me, tell me what I am, tell me what I'm supposed to be. I want to become something. I need, I need more layers and layers of stuff to put on myself. Um, yeah. And um, what else do I want to say about this? And this is why, because it's its motion or the result of an ego is that it keeps you attached and anchored into the physical realm. This is why on other on the other half of the spiritual journey, we say it's so important to, to dissolve the ego. The ego is our astral body, and we need to clear that up and clean it up so that we have a vehicle that's a vehicle and a mind, a clear mind that's not attached to this physical realm. Because if we have attachments, we got an anchor, how can we um, rise to different levels of being and consciousness? So we need to dissolve the ego, but we don't want to do it from, well, I hate you or whatever. But we hear all the time, and particularly in Gene Keys, they go, oh, we have to embrace. And I can't remember the embrace it. But the point is that the matrix of the ego, what it's made up of is misqualified energetic beings, little thought forms that are conscious thought forms and we need to open the door. This is why we always say, bring it, bring everything back into you. These thoughts and these emotions, they need to be brought into that vertical column of your true self, that inner self, so that they too can have a chance to return to their true cosmic state. So it's so important whenever we feel you know, are trying to heal these thought forms, like I hate myself, my I have a broken heart, all these, all these thoughts we have to and feelings, we bring them in and let the ego have its own awakening, or those particular thought forms have their own awakening. Bring it into this beautiful vertical columns that's constantly going, returning back to source. And that's when they're completely dissolved. That's how we heal and dissolve the ego. Um, now, of course, some people, it, it is true that we need some aspects of our ego self to keep us anchored in the body, just enough to keep us anchored so that we're, we just don't float off into, you know, the Netherlands. <laughs> um, so we don't dissolve the ego completely, but... Um, certain aspects of, of it do remain, 
Um, but yeah, I don't know if that really answers um, anybody's questions about what is the ego, except I think you already know. And um, I will say, I'll share another experience. I was at a conference and um, about uh, personality types or any gram com conference. And um, I really had, I, 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 I had an attachment to being a particular personality type. This was, yeah, this was even before this, the ego, uh, yeah, it was before that. Um, and I remember sitting in the lunch, we were all at lunch and I, I think I said, oh, I'm this type, or I feel like I'm this type. And this person goes, oh, really? Oh, I don't see you that at all. And I don't even know what, re what sparked this reaction, but it was like some mystical thing happened. All of a sudden I could feel, and you know, we all have this reaction when, when, on a particular touchy subject in our lives, when someone like disagrees with us or something, it, it, the, you could tell the ego is really attached to being something or to know something and somebody disagrees and you start, you have like a, I'm going to die reaction or a real reaction. This is what was happening to me, but at such a deep level, like I wasn't even aware of what was happening. Like I felt this heat rising up inside of me and I was like starting to cry and I had to, it was so bizarre. It was so crazy off. Oh, what a reaction. Um, and I got up and I had to run out of the lunchroom when I was running back to my room and what I could hear behind me and feel, I could hear shards of glass literally crashing and breaking behind me as I was running away and in that moment I'm getting chills now because I remember I had to get in the shower and the hot shower and I was crying and I that was the first time I recognized what my teacher was telling me I saw the ego and that was so this event happened before the other event and I could and I saw immediately oh my god that's the ego. That's a part of me that was so identified in being a something, something or becoming a something, something or, or looking for confirmation that I was something, something. And somebody came along and said, no, you're not, or I don't agree with you, or I don't see you that way. And it just shook me. And it was such, such a great event happening because that the shards of glass, what it made me realize in that moment is I saw the ego. And the moment you see it, it starts cracking. And it's, and I, you know, it sounds weird to hear shards of glass breaking behind me. I absolutely heard it. This was not fantasy. This was happening. And um, I think it was just, just recently, maybe in the last couple of years, I heard somebody else say a similar thing that they heard glass breaking so the ego does create a kind of glass or crystalline structure around you the astral body i suppose that needs a break needs it you can actually break it and it breaks you open and the moment you see it or you see how identified you are with something that's the beginning of the end of the ego and then it just gets crazy from there but anyway yeah it is it is it's a process of energy constantly moving outwards to verify the self that it's something and that it needs to become something and this is why i say and that the cosmos says that systems can be so detrimental that they don't agree that the, from the cosmic perspective the highest perspective they don't see that systems are true spiritual teaching that they're actually false spiritual teachings because they keep the consciousness 
constantly reaching out. Oh, let me look at my, let me look at my gene keys. What am I here? This let's look at my soul contract. Oh yeah. That's why I'm having trouble. Oh, oh, the, the moon is in this position. No wonder I'm, ha I'm feeling weird. This is all energy moving outwards. And it's, it's very seldom the truth of what's going on because we never check in here. And the cosmos says, you know, if a system, if, if, if a spiritual teaching is not pointing inwards for you to determine for yourself, it's not a true spiritual teaching. And that's what all of these systems really do. They tell you what you are. I mean, how crazy is it that we are depending on a system, a concept to tell us who we are? We don't need them. We already know who we are. We already know what we like. But but that poor little ego who's never had contact with its true inner truth, it doesn't even know it exists, doesn't know what it is. And um probably not making sense right now. And it so it grasps grasp for anything out there to tell it what it is because it's never been in contact. And this is why meditation is so important, not contemplation, meditation, because we need to take everything that's out there and pull it in and bring it into ourselves so that one of these thought forms can get a little we bring it in, bring it in, and say one particular fear or thought form touches that vertical column of our inner truth, and it goes, whoa, whoa, I'm going to feel fear, but I can recognize that this fear that this I'm that I built is not the truth, and suddenly it dissolves. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's really <laughs> uh, too much talking about ego when you already know what it is. But maybe that maybe something I said, I don't know, adds another layer of understanding or an aha or something. Anyway, I hope it made sense. Okay, bye.